an effective and reliable way to test whether someone has used too much cannabis to drive. But a group of researchers at UCSD is studying the topic and finding it's a lot more complicated than knowing if someone is drunk. Our ABC 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena spoke to one of those doctors behind the recently published study. Nearly 200 regular cannabis users were recruited for a study conducted by the Center for Medicinal Cannabis Research at UC San Diego School of Medicine. Dr. Tom Marcotte other. is the co-director of the center yeah. and says one of the major takeaways had to do with perception. When asked 30 minutes after using, many participants said they weren't okay to drive. As time went on, those same people felt more confident, but the test showed they were still impaired. For users, uh, who may be cautious and well-intentioned right after smoking, say, I'm not hitting the road, they need to be aware that sometimes you may feel an hour or two later, it's wearing off, I'm better to go. At least in our study, that's often not the case. However, the study also showed there was no connection between blood levels of THC after smoking and how people drove, meaning there's no universal level to say when someone is impaired. So when people think about per se laws where we say, hey, if you have this amount of THC in your blood, you're considered an impaired driver, it just doesn't work because of the way THC um, distributes throughout the body. Dr. Marcotte says the work they're doing can help lead to a reliable test for law enforcement who now only have the traditional field sobriety tests. We'd like to try to help augment that with tests that really get more at the cognitive effects of cannabis because the field sobriety tests are not very cognitively challenging and cannabis really affects cognition more than balance and those sort of things. Lindsay Pena, ABC 10 News. It is also important to note the study only looked at smoking cannabis and does not apply to any other ways of using marijuana.